Hi, let's look at how we can create thrift service simulators. So we've got this typical situation here where we've got a thrift client that's communicating with a thrift server. And what you see often is while developing and testing those thrift clients or microservices or applications, uh, there's gonna be a bunch of problems with the thrift servers. Uh, the API service is not yet available. There's some manual processes in the back out, back, backend systems that need to be dealt with. Um, there's gonna be test data setup issues. Uh, or refreshes required. You want to set up hypothetical situations and it might be hard to set up in those backend servers. Uh, there's going to be hard to investigate test failures and intermittent failures with the test environments. So how are you supposed to test and develop your software in that environment? Well, what you can do is use a simulator all those problems will be handled there for you. So um, you can simulate not yet available services. You can automate all of those backend processes. You can set up the test data in a way you like. You would like it because you control uh, the simulator. Uh, you can have one click or automated test data refreshes. You can set up hypothetical situations. Basically those simulators act in a predictable way. So let's demo that. I'm gonna have a sample thrift application here, the famous thrift calculator, and um, it's gonna be connecting to the calculator server, and we're gonna use that as a sample for how we can create the simulator for us. So first of all, let me show you how to use this calculator and how it looks like. So I'm gonna start the calculator. That's how it looks like. I'm gonna start the server. There we got it, it's running. So five times five equals 25. So everything's working so far. So what we're gonna do is create the thrift simulator uh, by using uh, traffic parrot and recording the thrift messages, okay? So we're gonna put traffic parrot between the client and the server and it's gonna record the messages so we don't have to create them manually. So first of all, let's point traffic parrot and proxy the traffic at the calculator server. So first of all, uh, we're going to traffic parrot and I've got traffic parrot running here, the web user interface of traffic parrot. I'm gonna go to record and I need the recording host and port here so let me go to the server and see where it's running so it's running lo on localhost 5572 that's the port number 5572 start the recording and now the record is running on port 5562 and proxying to the real server 5572 um, so now what we've got is the traffic powered recorder proxying the traffic to the calculator server we need to now point the calculator client at traffic parrot instead of the real server. So traffic parrot recorders running on 5562, that's the port number locally. Um, so instead of 5572, I'm gonna change this to 5562. Clear this, say same again, what is five times five? It's 25. So traffic parrot has recorded something. We can see that in the background. Stop the recording now. And we can see that it's recorded this uh, get struct clear instruction and it's, recorded this calculate instruction as well which is the one we're interested in so we can see that there was a request to multiply five by five and the re re response from the server was 25 and this is what traffic powers recorded so right now what we've got is um this situation so the thrift client is communicating only with the traffic power thrift simulator and there's no need for the server and we can prove that uh, by going to the server console stopping it so the server is not running anymore and i can still do the multiplications so five times five equals 25. great so our simulator is running and the thrift client we can test it in isolation without having to rely on the server now the challenge we have is what happens if I do five times 10? Traffic Parrot did not know what to do with this. And why is that? Well, because um, we didn't tell it what to do with it. So as you can see here, we can configure Traffic Parrot to be a bit, smart, a bit smarter and generate those responses dynamically. So we can, for example, use the request data, those uh, numbers and the multiplication that comes in and produce a dynamic response a pr and create a very smart simulator to simulate uh, the responses and the way it's gonna so the the way the request looks like is you've got these two numbers and the operation multiply and what we can do in traffic parrot is uh, generate the response using handlebar helpers uh, so what we're doing is saying do some math it's a multiplication and we're extracting the two numbers from the request 
Um, so this is how a dynamic response template in Traffic Pirate will look like in this JSON format. Original server response that's been recorded, but instead of the hard-coded number, we're putting in the dynamic content here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to edit this guy, and I'm going to say that it doesn't have to be just fives in here. I'm going to say that anything that contains a multiply in the request, we're going to know it's a multiply. So we're going to be doing... We're going to be doing math and multiply two numbers. First one is w dot number. The second one is number two. So there we go. So now I should be able to multiply five times 10. And there we go. It works. Times 99. Perfect. Times 100. Amazing. So we've got a multiplication server now created in Traffic Pirate. And just a side note, where did I get these magic formulas from? We just go to documentation, dynamic responses, and we'll see that you can use the request data and responses in Traffic Pirate. And for thrift, you use the request body variable name. Uh, but then, so we're using the multiplication here. Which, we, which we've used, math. And we also need to extract the data from the request from this JSON representation of the thrift message using JSON path, uh, which is here, notation that we just saw. You can see detail how to use this in the documentation of Traffic Pirate. So yeah, so now we're able to test our application and develop it in isolation with using these simulators. And all of these problems go away for us because uh, we've got a simulator that's in our control and we can put into the simulator the behavior that we want. So the next step here is uh, if you feel like this is something you'd like to use or try, uh, please go to trafficpower.com and request the free evaluation. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.